don't know if you remember this from your Bible study, but uh, I, I love the story about one time when John was baptizing, uh, and there was a, a group of very religious, devout people in the line, and uh, he saw them there, and he said, uh, you're a bunch of snakes. <laughs> Get out of the line, you know. I'm not really sure you've repented of anything, you know. Go, go change your life, prove it to me for a little while, and maybe I'll baptize you. Uh, you know, what, what, what a response, right, to request for baptism. Uh, on another occasion, though, of all people, uh, Jesus appeared in that baptism line. And we're going to read now in Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 to 17, about what happened. Matthew writes, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. Do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It's proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented, and as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased." article of faith on baptism uh, reads like this, and I think it's also on your outline. It says, we believe that Christian baptism, commanded by our Lord, is a sacrament, signifying acceptance of the benefits of the atonement of Jesus Christ, to be administered to believers and declarative of their faith in Jesus Christ as their Savior, and their full purpose of obedience in holiness and righteousness. Baptism being a symbol of the new covenant, young children may be baptized upon request of parents or guardians who shall give assurance for them of necessary Christian training. Baptism may be administered by sprinkling, pouring, or immersion according to the choice of the applicant. Now, you read something like that on paper, and it, it's not as quite as exciting as singing, Who Can Satisfy My Soul Like You? <laughs> a little bit cut and dry. But these doctrines are not meant to be talked about. They're meant to be acted upon. Baptism is a call to action, and I think the doctrine of baptism has an act that it calls every one of us here this morning uh, to do. First of all, the, the call to action to the church is just one word and an exclamation point. Baptize. <laughs> this is our God-given assignment. The church, us together, believers together, we are to baptize. In Matthew 28, 16 to 20, we find the resurrected Jesus getting ready to ascend back into heaven he gathers what some have called his newborn church. It might be his preborn church. It consists of, of those who would lead the church in the days ahead. And Jesus, before he leaves, wants them to understand their purpose and their mission and their priorities. He wants them to know uh, between then and when he comes again what he expects them to do. And uh, Matthew 28, 16 says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. This meeting had been prearranged. When they saw him, they worshipped him, the resurrected Christ, but some doubted. That's understandable. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And that was at this point obvious. Therefore, he said, and here's the assignment, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey, to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Also, I believe that the doctrine of baptism issues a call to action for unbaptized believers, and that is to request baptism. Uh, Acts chapter 16, we find Paul and Silas in jail in Philippi, and they're there because of the work of the gospel. Uh, as you know, it had been an eventful 24 hours for them. 
They'd been arrested, tried, flogged, imprisoned. They'd participated in, in a jailhouse prayer meeting and hymn sing. And then to top the day off, they had a violent earthquake, right? So if you ever feel like you've had a bad day, read about the day they had. And yet after all that, there was somebody more shook up than them. And that was the jailkeeper. Uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 29 says that the jailer, after all of this, called for lights. Rushing in and trembling before Paul and Silas, he then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household and your family. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in the house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds because he'd seen them beaten and flogged. Then immediately he and all of his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. You see, it was a Nazarene family. <laughs> he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. And then finally, there is... Uh, a call to action, I think, in this doctrine for baptized believers, for, for those of us who have believed on Jesus and we've confessed that through our baptism. And I think our call to action is that of remembering our baptism. Acts 2.37 says, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and they said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, too. The promise is good for you, and it's good for your children, and it's good for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And we believe the call of God goes to all. Uh, it's important that you and I remember our baptisms. Sometimes people like a lot of us who were baptized a long time ago, you know, maybe baptized when we were relatively young, we say, I don't, you know, I don't remember a whole lot about it. Uh, I don't remember a lot of the details. I, I didn't understand a lot of it back then. Maybe I need to, maybe I need to re-up. <laughs> Let me make a confession to you about the meaning of baptism. I didn't understand it all when I was baptized at the age of 16, and I don't understand it all now, and I'm pretty sure that I never will. <laughs> it's bigger than my brain, and it's deeper than my soul. And in case you think I'm being humble, I'm pretty sure it's bigger than your brain too, <laughs> and deeper than your soul also. But you know what? Over the weeks and the months and the years, and the decades of Sundays, as we continue throughout the week with the Lord, meditating faithfully on Scripture, praying for His will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, especially praying that it will be done in our lives, we grow in our understanding of baptism. We come to see for ourselves what really is important is not our age or the amount of water or even our uh, detailed recollection or our in-depth understanding. But what was important was the obedience. What was important was the statement we made. What was important was the sacredness and the holiness of that simple act. We don't have to remember it all or understand it all. We just need to be grateful that we have had the privilege of being baptized in the name of Jesus. Remember that you have been baptized in Jesus' name and be grateful. Amen.